Welcome back everyone! Today we are going to take a look at 2010 American horror film called The Final. The movie begins as a girl in a hood enters a diner. She goes to the counter and orders a meal. The waitress notes her order, but then when she looks at her face, her expression changes. She catches herself staring a moment later and shifts her gaze. The girl pulls her hand out of her pocket to put the money on the counter, which reveals that she's missing two fingers. After that, she goes to sit at a table, but all heads seem to be turning as they notice her face. Unable to take it, she flips the table over in frustration and yells at them, telling them to stop staring and runs out. Next, we're taken to the high school. Bradley enters his classroom and takes a seat behind a timid kid named Ravi. Bradley slaps Ravi's head and starts bullying him. The teacher notices this and tells Bradley to change seats with Bernard. However, Bernard turns out to be just another friend of Bradley's. As he takes a seat behind Ravi, he slaps his head as well. Next, we're introduced to the popular girls, Heather, Bridget, and Kelly. As they walk down the hallway, they find a girl called Emily next to her locker. They surround her and start bullying her. When she asks why they're always so mean, they remark that they're nothing but honest. Feeling extremely hurt, Emily pushes her way past them and leaves. Near a secluded house in the woods, Dane is checking the bear traps laid out on the lawn. A war veteran, Parker, who lives near the property, approaches him and asks him about his uncle Workley. Dane tells him that his uncle died and left the house to him. Parker pays him his condolences. He tells him he'll be there for him if he needs anything and leaves. At night, while Emily is sitting in her room, she gets a call from Ravi. She tells him she's watching a movie he sent and remarks it's gruesome and disgusting. Hence, perfect. The next day at school, the outcasts sit at a table discussing their plans for revenge. The populars, who's sitting at the next table, throw a milk carton at them. They cheer and laugh as the milk splatters all over the outcasts. Ravi grabs the carton and goes to their table. He simply puts it in front of Bernard, who again ridicules him. The others burst out in laughter. Feeling greatly embarrassed, Ravi walks away. Curtis, a likable student and inspiring actor, goes to the outcast table. He excitedly tells him he has an upcoming shoot and invites them to come. The outcasts congratulate him and seem happy for him. Curtis then asks Ravi if he can bring his camera and do a behind-the-scenes shot for him, which Ravi gladly agrees to do. As he walks away, the outcasts collectively decide that Curtis isn't one of the bad ones and he must not be part of the revenge. As Heather is getting ready in her room, her friends learn through a text message on her phone that she's hooking up with Tommy, a guy who's in a relationship with another classmate called Nadia. When they ask Heather about it, she tells them to strictly keep it a secret. They cheer her on and laugh about it. While he's at the shoot with Curtis, Ravi heads out and cleans his camera lens. Bradley and Bernard see him there and start bullying him. Bernard holds him back as Bradley takes his camera and breaks it. Dane comes out a moment later and sees it trashed. In disbelief, he asks if they trashed it. Bradley tells him they did and grabs him intimidatingly, asking what he's going to do about it. He then tells him he does this to them since he knows they can't stop him. The bullies laugh and joke as they head out. Dane puts Ravi on the shoulder, telling them their time will come. The next day at school, Ravi apologizes to Curtis for not being able to do the shoot as he asked. Curtis tells him it wasn't his fault and then goes to Bradley, confronting him and telling him to leave Ravi alone. They both end up in a physical fight, which the whole school watches while cheering. As his parents are heard fighting in the background, Dane puts a gun to his head, unable to take the agony of life anymore. However, he decides against it soon after and tells himself he'll not be afraid. Ravi sits at the table with his estranged family, the silence and lack of comfort and compassion cutting into him like a knife. While Jack's father is working on his car, Jack tells him he's leaving, but the father doesn't even care as much to humor him with the response. Jack meets up with Dane and they both prepare their guns. At night, the outcasts sit around a bonfire discussing their troubling lives and their family problems. They express their happiness as they remark that all their problems will end soon. Next, we're taken to Dane's house in the woods where the outcasts have arranged a costume party for the bullies. The outcasts stand in a circle holding hands, praying to God to give them a sign if they should stop. When nothing happens, they put on their masks and head out to the main room. Students start slowly pouring in, and the whole place becomes lively with music and excited shrieks. They notice Curtis has also come to the party. Ravi tells them he'll go talk to him, but Dane refuses to let him. He says if he came, he shall stay. He then declares it's time and tells the boys no one must leave. They then lace the punch bowl with a drug meant to induce drowsiness. As the partying people drink it up, they slowly start falling asleep one by one. The outcasts get out of their costume and get into different menacing ones. The car keys of the students are collected and put away. They go outside where all the sleeping students have laid down on the ground. Dane uses a high-pitched frequency note to wake them up. The bullies thus wake up to find themselves in chains. They start taking in their surroundings in confusion, wondering what's happening to them. Using a voice manipulator, the masked Dane declares their intention to make them suffer a fate worse than death as revenge for the years they have suffered from bullying. A student called Miles makes a witty remark, making the others laugh. At a response, he is shot by the outcast with a cattle gun, in the knee and in the face. The laughter immediately dies down and fear and desperation take its place on the student's face. 
As the terrified students start crying, Dane tauntingly says they must understand the seriousness of the situation now. He then asks if anyone wants to leave. Tommy raises his hand and asks to take his girlfriend, Nadia, with him. Dane says he'll go alone and has his chains removed. Tommy is led to the door and told that he is free to leave. He tells Nadia he loves her and promises to bring back help as he heads out. Once he's left, Dane tells his girlfriend Nadia that she must believe her boyfriend loves her immensely. He then tells her that that's not the case as he reveals that he had been cheating on her with Heather. Heather looks back at Nadia, not saying a word, thus confirming it. As Tommy is running through the woods to get to safety, the outcasts give chase. Tommy catches his foot in a bear trap and collapses. The severely injured Tommy is then brought back by the outcast and placed in a room next to Miles on the floor. Bradley starts bawling and says they'll all go to hell. As a response, Dane tells them he's already there, indicating his life has been made into a living hell by these bullies. Dane then tells Jack to play his banjo for the bullies as a treat. Ravi takes a vial in hand and approaches Bernard with it. Bernard starts cursing and swearing at him in frustration, earning him a knife in the shoulder. As Bernard screams in agony, Ravi pours the liquid in his mouth. As a result, Bernard collapses to the ground and starts having convulsions. A moment later, his movements stop. Ravi takes off the restraints and lays his arms by his side. When he passes by Curtis on his way back, he throws a key beside him. Dane explains that Bernard has now been paralyzed. He can't move, but he'll feel everything they do to him. Emily then approaches Bernard with needles and straddles him. She shows him the pin to everyone before pushing it into Bernard's flesh. She continues this for a while, pushing one needle at a time, his body convulsing with each attack. At the end, she pushes a whole bunch into his chest. She then gets up and takes a bow before she leaves. Bernard's body is then taken away to the other hurt one. A masked Andy then roams the area with an axe, trying to choose his next victim. Curtis manages to free himself on the restraints and makes a run for it. Dane tries to shoot him, but Ravi tackles him to the ground. Dane overpowers Ravi and pulls off his mask. Ravi says that Curtis never hurt them, instead he stood up for them, but Dane tells him he has betrayed the group and then drives a knife into his chest, killing him instantly. The other outcast gets shocked upon witnessing this. Emily rushes to Ravi's side and condemns Dane. Dane simply declares that none of them are free of the consequences from their actions. Curtis rushes outside and finds a deputy in the woods. He asks him for help, however the deputy is shortly killed by one of the outcasts. Curtis takes the deputy's gun and runs away. Andy and Jack, who are now chasing Curtis, approach the deputy on their vehicles. Back in the house, Emily is sitting beside Ravi's body, laid on a bed. As Jack comes inside, Emily says Dane did not have the right to do this, but Jack says they have to finish what they started. Heather is now gagged and restrained to a chair at the front. Emily smears a corrosive compound on her face as Dane explains how it will slowly, painfully eat at her flesh. Andy informs Dane about the deputy who makes the announcement in a taunting way, saying Curtis wanted to get help but failed. Bradley calls Dane a coward for hiding behind a mask. Dane approaches him and tells him that it's actually a representation of what he made them into, a monster. Bradley asks to see his face, to which Dane pulls off his mask, saying he must know who changed his life forever. Dane then tells him that he wanted to live his whole life in darkness, but by not letting him do that, Bradley actually empowered him. While running, Curtis comes across Parker's house. He begs for help, however, seeing the gun in Curtis's hand, Parker refused to trust him and knocks him out. Emily then approaches her next victim, Bradley. Bradley starts begging her not to hurt him. A guy in a corner, Riggs, tells Bradley not to give them the pleasure by begging, but the terrified Bradley continues to beg. Bridget tells Emily that she knows who she is. Emily pulls off her mask and the other outcasts follow her, pulling off their masks as well. Bridget apologizes to Emily for the way that she mistreated her. As a result, Emily tells her that she'll spare her if she cuts off Bradley's fingers. Bridget has now been restrained in the chair by the outcasts. They urge Bradley to cut off her fingers, threatening him with a gun. Bridget begs him not to, but he tells her he has to, for if he doesn't, they'll hurt him instead. Emily then gags Bridget as Bradley cuts off one of her fingers. The outcasts look at him, enjoying their pain and fear. Dane tells Bradley he knew he could hurt someone to save his own skin and urges him to proceed. Bradley cuts off another finger as Bridget lets out muffled screams. Emily then leans down and tells Bridget that to save herself from all this pain, all she has to do is inflict it on someone else. She asks her if she'll do it, to which Bridget nods. After a little bit more pushing from Curtis, Parker decides to leave him restrained in the house and go investigate Dane's house himself. Bridget now sits beside Bradley, who's restrained to the chair. When she hesitates to cut his fingers, Dane tells Emily to give her a bit of inspiration. Emily approaches Bridget with the corrosive compound and smears it over half her face, saying if she cuts Bradley's fingers off, she'll remove the compound before it starts to eat away at her face. Bridget puts the cutter to Bernard's finger but then drops it, saying she can't do this. Emily tells her she'll now have to suffer for her decision as the compound slowly starts burning her skin. 
Parker roams the wood near Dame's house, looking for suspicious activity when he suddenly falls into a trap, which makes a board of knives pierce through his thighs. He wails in pain, attracting the attention of an outcast who had been keeping watch outside. Back at Parker's, Curtis manages to free himself. He grabs a gun and calls the cops over, saying there's been a robbery at Dane's. He then rushes out to Dane's himself. We're then taken back to the woods, where Parker has somehow managed to kill the outcast and is now crawling away. Bridget drops to the ground, her face now totally burnt by the corrosive. She's then pulled away to be placed by the other victims. Dane then approaches Bradley on the chair and tells him that they couldn't think of a punishment that faked his crimes. No matter what he thought of, he wouldn't be satisfied. But he had finally found a suitable punishment. Bradley attempts to apologize, but Dane doesn't budge. He places a knife at Bradley's back and tells him that he'll neither enjoy playing his favorite games again, nor will he ever enjoy the pleasure of sex. He then digs the knife into Bradley's back, severing his spinal cord, thus paralyzing him from below the waist. An outcast finds the one killed by Jack laying dead in the woods. A few feet ahead, he sees Parker similarly laying on the ground. He kicks him to see if he's alive, but his body appears to be lifeless. He leans beside him and tries to have a look at his face, but Parker stabs and kills him. While Dane is making another speech about how the events of this night will change them and live on forever, Riggs gets enraged and starts throwing insults at the outcasts. Infuriated by his behavior, the outcasts surround Riggs as Dane declares him their next victim. Curtis finds Parker leaning by a tree and asks him if he's okay. Parker tells him not to worry about him and go save the kids that are being held captive. Just as Andy and Jack are about to cut off Riggs' tongue, Curtis barged in with the gun, telling them to stop. Dane tells Curtis to go away, say they don't have an issue with him. Curtis tells Dane he's been his friend for a long time, but he can't let him do this, since Riggs doesn't deserve it. Dane remarks that he does, and orders Andy to proceed, but Curtis puts a bullet inside Andy, thus killing him. Dane shoots Curtis in the shoulder, and then approaches him with the gun aimed at him. Just as he's about to kill him, Emily shoots him dead and declares she's had enough. Jack approaches her, saying he feels the same. Emily gives him the gun, and they hug. Emily then turns to Kelly, still sitting amidst the others, unharmed. She tells her she just wanted to be friends, and then turns, standing with her back to Jack. Jack puts the gun to her head and shoots. Just then, the police enter the house and tell Jack to drop his gun. Jack puts the gun in his temple and tells the cops there are more of them out in the woods. The cops tell him not to do this, saying they can work something out, but Jack shoots himself and the screen fades out. A media reporter is then seen reporting the incident as a group of high schoolers kidnapping and hurting their fellow mates without reason. Curtis is seen walking on school grounds with a plastered arm. A traumatized Kelly decides to commit suicide and the girl from the beginning is revealed to be Bridget. Drop a comment below letting me know how you found the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching, guys.